do to get through this thing, manage this thing as best we can, take care of our family, our loved ones. And as you were talking about, you know, not only practice social distancing, but just as important uh, in practicing our social distancing is, I think, recognizing the encouraging numbers that we are finally seeing uh, after all these weeks. No, I appreciate it. And, and, and it, you know, Dwayne, one of the reasons I'm so honored to be able to talk to you is you, you, you really led the way in having the guts to make the point that, you know, no one stands taller than when they reach out and ask for help, uh, that the toughest folks out there are people that call someone else and say, you know what, I, I, need, to, I need to talk to you. I'm not feeling, you know, good about things. I'm stressed out. I'm a little anxious. And I think the biggest and most difficult thing when we talk about people staying at home is to remind them they're not alone. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Sure, I'd, I'd love to. You know, uh, you know, that's one of those things where you, you, and I know for me personally, as I speak from experience, and I know that a lot of Americans are dealing with the same thing too. It's like, it's almost um, happening in, in um happening in cycles. So the first cycle is just how real the virus uh, is. And we're watching the rest of the world and we're having the rest of the world inform us. Um, of course, our, our local uh, state leaders are informing us too as well. Okay, and then the lockdown starts to happen. This, the, the isolation starts to happen. We think we could do it, you know? And, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, you could be the most optimistic uh, guy or optimistic woman in the world. And then all of a sudden you, you start to feel a little bit of this heaviness. And so it happened, you know, to me, and I've had some bouts with depression in the past that I've been open about. And, um, you know, with this, this particular one was interesting and it, and we got to recognize it just in the fact that, you know, it is, you know, when we are self-distancing, there's, there's the immediate change and the sudden change that happens. Then there's the deaths that are happening all around us. And it reached a point where somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who has it. Now I have very close friends who have lost their loved ones just like that. And it's really devastating. And then that, there's the unemployment. Then there's the fear of the unknown. So as you know, Governor, and as a lot of people watching right now know that, you know, it's, it's one of those things where... Sometimes when, when we get a little down and we get into the muck of things and we're in the sludge of things and it happens to the best of us, you know, generally we could call our buddies and say, hey, you know, tell me about tomorrow. Tell me how good things are going to be tomorrow. What do you got you going on in your side of the world? But we're dealing with a global grief that happens. And I think when we're dealing with a global grief, there's a heaviness there in the air. And I think that we have, we recognize that. So what I've been able to do was, because I tell you, Governor, you know, I've had when the whole thing first started, it's been about 50-50. I've had some really good days hmm. where I feel anchored and balanced and I feel optimistic and hopeful. And I feel like, okay, a lot of people are counting on me just like you two as well, family, friends, um, people who we can have some influence over, some positive influence. And then, and then the opposite side of that, I'll have some days where it's just, yeah, I'm wobbly yeah. because you just don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And so what I started to do was, reach out to my friends and say, hey, let's, uh, let's have some fireside chats. Let's break open a few drinks. <laughs> let's talk about it. Um, so on my good days, I'm reaching out to them. But then on my wobbly days, uh, I get such gratification, great gratitude in that they reach out to me too. Because at the end of the day, like you said, Governor, man, we're not alone. Nobody's alone in this thing. So this is the kind of stuff that causes anxiety, it causes depression. Uh, it causes insomnia, <laughs> it causes yeah. a lot of things that we have to be aware of and do everything we possibly can do, in my opinion, to exercise that muscle. And, and this is the biggest one right here, where we hold on to that fundamental quality of faith, that things are going to be okay, not necessarily a religious uh, faith, but just the faith that things are going to be okay. Because, you know, I'm also a um, I'm also, a, I have a two-hand philosophy. I believe that we can control things with our own two hands, and that's what we should concern ourselves with. So in this case, we can control our social distancing, and again, we see encouraging numbers, and things will be okay, and, and, and you're not alone. And, and we all are experiencing this thing together. Uh, I love that. And, and you know, my, my mantra is this whole idea that the future is not just something to experience, it's something to manifest. It's not in front of you, it's inside of you, right? It's our decisions that will determine our fate and future. And in the capacity for all of us, hundreds of millions of Americans, to practice physical distancing will determine the fate 
of this disease, this epidemic, and will bend that curve and get us to the other side even quicker. So it just, it's so important, people, I maintain that faith that we will get through the other side and that we have the power to actually influence that, that we're not bystanders at this incredibly important time. That's right, absolutely. And, and Governor, I have a question for you. During this time, uh, you know, when you think about and you're talking with your own family, I know you have little kids too as well. Yeah. What we're doing on our end is trying to make sure that our babies, I have an 18-year-old daughter, I have a four-year-old daughter, and I have a, one that's going to be two next weekend. Awesome. We're trying to do our best to make sure that they don't feel as much. Our 18-year-old is good. Like, she's, she's <laughs> focused and she's, she's locked down. But our little ones, and much like yours, I'm curious, are you guys making sure that they don't feel any kind of disruption? They're probably seeing a lot more daddy at home, which is yeah. a good thing. It's that silver lining. What are you guys doing? No, it's, it's such an important point, right? The distinction, because our kids can't verbalize like you and I are verbalizing. They can't pick up the phone and call someone. They don't even know how to reach out. Or moreover, they don't even know how to express that they're feeling anxious. They express it by not sleeping. By, uh, they express it by having a tummy ache. Uh, and it's so important for us as parents to really be hypersensitive to those changes. And, and also, by the way, still, I love to hear that your 18-year-old's doing well. But for teens, this is tough, right? I mean, because you're not seeing your friends at school. You're, you know, if you're a senior in high school, you're like, what's happening in my grades? Am I going to get into college? Uh, how do I make up for all of this? My SATs and everything else. And so what we're doing as a state, not just as a family, like you're doing as a family, is trying to make sure that we avail ourselves to resources. And we put out with our Surgeon General, California, because we really are a nation state, has our own Surgeon General. And we put out detailed guidelines where people can call for helplines and also call for playbooks so that they can address their own anxieties but also address the needs uh, of their children. That site's at covid19.ca.gov. One of those terrible government sites, right? covid19.ca.gov. But we, we make available to everybody and really encourage people to take advantage of those resources. Uh, that's fantastic. And I, I know about that. Of course, a lot of uh, my buddies there in California, I'm in California too, as well, that we're aware of that. And I, w a question for you then, Governor, is there, when we think about the new normal that we're going to have to start thinking about now, I'm sure you guys are doing that in your own household, yeah. encouraging um, your staff too, as well, and all the people around you. Um, what would you say, what does that new normal look like? What can, what can, what are you seeing on your end that's encouraging to as well? You know, Dwayne, I, this is not just complimenting you just to appear to be patronizing, but man, I, I think the most powerful and potent things are people like yourself that are willing to talk about depression and, and you know, I, iconic individuals like yourselves, not just talking about being physically tough, uh, but recognizing that the brain is also part of the body. Uh, and that brain health matters as much. And number two, you know, just your, your one video that, what, 25 million people have seen just teaching your daughter how to wash her hands. I mean, that's just, that's, that's saving lives. And so it's those kinds of things that we all can do our small part. Not everybody's the rock. Not everyone has a platform that a governor uh, or a mayor may have, but we all have friends, we all have small networks, even if it's just one person following you, to remind them of their power at this moment, to make a difference, to quite literally bend the curve, so that we can come out the other side sooner than people ever even imagined. Well, you know, I mean, that's the thing that we were talking about earlier, about, you know, being uh, really aware of the things that we can control. There's there's a lot of things that we can control and then there's a lot of things that we can't control. You know, the virus, for example, you can't cheat it, but we can do our best to help control it. And one of the things we could do as simple as it is, is, is washing hands, teaching our kids how to wash hands and, you know, being really, really disciplined um, about that uh, too as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering, you, you've got, we've got Easter coming up and this is a time that's all about family. And I, I know people have a temptation uh, as the weather starts to get better, better a little cabin fever, right? Because then people all across the country, around the world, have been practicing social distancing, physical distancing. And now the sun's out, it's Easter weekend, kids are there. And, you know, what do you, what do you recommend we tell our kids? And what do we recommend to others they tell their families in terms of this weekend in particular and making sure we continue to be safe and be smart? You know what? This has been 
this has been uh this has been a tough month and a half two months for us it's been a tough 2020 uh you know kind of all around and um uh you know we and it the, the sun's coming out and that was the thing too earlier on it's like okay when the sun comes out you know it's going to start to um it's going to start to to flatten the curve of this because the virus doesn't like sunshine the summer's coming the springtime is coming so it's extremely tempting for us as a family i mean we want to get out like <laughs> the, the weather's beautiful yeah. um so i would tell fellow californians as well as i would tell our fellow americans that i i would tell tell them exactly what i tell myself and exactly what our families um what our family is, is saying to each other which is are we doing everything we possibly can do to be the cure and not the reason why the curve doesn't flatten. And again, it's tempting to get out there. It's Easter weekend. We've got a lot to celebrate and a lot to be grateful for. But, you know, one of the things that I go back to when it comes to just mental wellness, not only for myself, men, my wife, us, family, we, you know, we're having, um, the, we're having the, the calls, we're having the video calls, is this idea of silver lining. And this idea of trying to find a silver lining in a lot of the things that we have going on. And, you know, if you really stop and pause just for a second, you can find a lot of silver lining. And in that silver lining is um, it's a beautiful weekend. It's Easter. We have a lot to be grateful for. We are going to we're going to have our Easter egg hunt as we normally do. It's going to be inside the house. It's going to be in the front yard a little bit. It might be in the backyard. <laughs> but other than that, that's it. Because when you think about it, you know, I'd like to think that when we look back on this, yes, it's unprecedented. Yes, we've never gone through this. And yes, our lives have changed just like that. And there is a time when this was before this crisis and then life after this crisis. But when we look back at it, you know, these are the moments where as hard as it is, as difficult as it is, I mean, you mentioned cabin fever. I mean, brother, my wife and I at midnight every night after, we, <laughs> after the kids are asleep, we are just sitting at the at the, at the kitchen, sitting in the kitchen, going, "Wow, all right, let's just breathe. We got this. We all got. We're all in this. We're all experiencing this together, and it's not easy. But again, I would recommend to our fellow Californians and our Americans um, what I've been telling myself and our family, which is just do everything we can to be part of the cure, because it's these. If, because if we're disciplined, especially if we're disciplined, if we're if we're exercising discipline now then we're gonna be able to enjoy things much quicker down yep. the line. And that's what I want. I want that for us. I want that for our Americans. I know you do too. I want our kids to get back to school. I want every American to get back to work. I want us to earn that hard earned dollar that everybody enjoys doing and getting back to work. So we're, we're, we're almost there, but we gotta be disciplined, especially now, because this is that time, as you know, and you're feeling it, you know, um, in California where it's, it's, it's that, you start to see a little bit of the encouraging news. The curve's starting to flatten, especially in New York, where things were tough and still are tough. California, all throughout the country, and then you know you you don't you almost don't want to let let up a little bit. Now's the time where you really got to stay and stay in that discipline lane. Yeah, no, but you're an athlete, man. We don't run the ninety yard dash, right? I mean, that's the worst decision in the world. So, uh, you know, you talked, and I I know our time's limited, but you talked about silver linings, and I think one of the silver linings in your life. Um, is still having your mom. And, yes. and I know it's been a tough year for you with your dad. And, you know, I imagine others watching that have lost loved ones. Uh, but, but that precious time with your mother. And the reason I bring it up is to make this point, that we're all, you know, Dr. King said, we're all bound together by a web of mutuality. Um, and, and you, your mom uh, is because you are in that interdependence. And what I mean by that is the impact all of our individual decisions have now on the lives of others. And so we talk about young, healthy people saying, hey, I got this. But young, healthy people have parents as well. And they don't want to have this virus and we don't want to put their lives at risk. And I'm just curious what your interaction is with your mom and, uh, and, and how you're talking to her and how you're talking to the rest of the family about how we take care of mom. Sure. Uh, well, thank you for bringing that up and about my mom. Uh, she's going to be thrilled, by the way, that the governor is talking about her. <laughs> um, and thank you for bringing that up about my dad. I did. My dad decided to check out and walk with the angels just like that um, back in January. And, what, and also what's interesting before I get to my mom, because I know a lot of people are going through this, is, is there's this there was a time when this happened, um, when we started our social distancing and isolation and everything got very real and very scary. 
um, the first couple of weeks. And I started to think to myself, I was talking to my therapist, uh, who I keep very busy, by the way. Uh, I said, you know, it feels like, did I not grieve enough for my dad? Like, because I feel, and in our conversations, it was really beautifully articulated. Well, we have a global grief going on. And there's, when there, there's a global grief like this, everybody's feeling this grief. You're feeling it's kind of heavy. So I bring that up to say, while I don't have my dad anymore, um, certainly miss him, but I do have my mom. And we all have our loved ones in our life, whether it's our mom, dad, hopefully both, grandparents, um, aunts, uncles. And, you know, we made a point very early. I said, Mom, um, she was in Florida. I said, I'm taking you out of Florida and I'm just, I'm going to bring you to us. And now you're locked down with us. Mm -hmm. And so she's high risk, uh, Governor. She had, um, she was diagnosed with stage 3B lung cancer. She, was, she has existing uh, issues. And, you know, this virus has one pathology from its inception to the lungs of human beings. Um, and we all know, you know, hopefully, you know, we all know the outcomes that, that could happen out of that. So she was very high risk. We have, we've locked her down. I think she's very happy to be here with the babies too as well. But you know, what's interesting is I, I've had to, and I'm sure it's been like this for you. I know it's been like this for a lot of my friends is this interesting thing happens with our parents and with our elderly in our family. They almost think this thing like they're immune to this. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 I'm going to go out. And so she, about two weeks ago, she was heading out and I saw her get in the car and I ran out there and I said, I'm sorry, where, where, where do you think you're going, mom? <laughs> she, <laughs> she goes, I'm going to run up to Publix real quick just to grab a few things. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> you're not going to go to Publix. <laughs> so she's well aware now of the seriousness of this. But, you know, like a lot of Americans out there, we got to take care of our loved ones. And that's another thing, too, that you really smartly brought up is, I think to myself, you know, I'm in, I'm in, th thank God, I'm a lucky SOB, I'm in some pretty good shape, I, I, I like to keep active, but I mean, I always think, well, what happens if I were to get the sick or get somebody sick? If for whatever reason I'm asymptomatic and all of a sudden I bring something home or I'm not being disciplined in my own social distancing, and I say, you know what, it's okay, I'm just going to go out this one time, take a picture with somebody, shake somebody's hand, or just in an airborne way, it just hits me and then all of a sudden I get her sick. Um, that would be a tough one. So again, we got to not only be disciplined with us, but certainly our loved ones too, our elderly. No, I, I, amen. And uh, you know, today, just interestingly, Dwayne, we had a, a big press conference. We've got this USNS Mercy, uh, that remarkable Navy uh, medical ship, this floating hospital in Los Angeles port. Uh, and we had a big spike in the number of our seniors in our skilled nursing facilities, our nursing homes that have uh, been tested positive. And big deal today, uh, the Navy is now allowing us to uh, move our seniors now on board uh, that Navy hospital ship to, to protect them. And it just, it reinforces the point you're making. Our seniors are the most vulnerable at this moment. And so your example about getting your mom and saying, what the heck are you thinking of taking the keys, mom? You remember, she used to do that to you a lot when you were young. Now it's yes. time to do it for our parents. Uh, take those keys away. I, I love that example, man. And it, that's good. Hey, just um, in our brief uh, moment, you know, because, you, you know, just I, I love you saying you, you got a therapist. I love you. Just being so honest and open. Um, what, what, what more do you, do you want to communicate to folks that you know? Frankly, say, well, that's good for him, but I, I, I've got this. I'm still tough. You know, I'm just, I may be drinking a little bit more. I may not be sleeping as much. I may be eating a little bit more. You know, ice cream, and you know, I may not be taking care of myself, but I got this. What do you want to communicate to those folks in terms of what they really should be doing? Well, you know what, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm uh, I try not to be as, as judgy as I used to be, <laughs> you know, and I, and I try to underreact to a lot of things. But, you know, when I see a lot of people, but, I, you know, I got to say, I, I feel like my senses and my gut, my instinct, um, and, and trying to have a finger on the pulse of what's going on in, in, in America with our Americans, um, is it feels like the majority of people are, they get it, they're doing everything they need to be doing, they're disciplined. Now, there's going to be a few out there who says, I'm okay, I'm tough, I'm this, I'm that, and not getting enough sleep, I'm cool, I beat depression once, I'm going to beat it again. And that may be true, and you may beat this one too. Um, however, I do believe in always practicing, uh, you know, discipline, and especially when it comes to something like this, because you know, the, the more, again, the more disciplined we can be now, then the earlier we can get back to enjoying a life that we once did. Now, 
it will be different, I believe. There's going to be a new normal that we're going to um, understand, embrace, and achieve. Uh, but that's okay. And that's, a, that's going to be a good thing because out of this, again, there's going to be some silver linings. And again, I want everybody to get back to work. I want the kids to get back to school. I also believe in, you know, I, I, and I know you believe this too as well, that our, not only are we resilient as Californians and as Americans, we're incredibly resilient. I also want, out of this, I think there's some silver lining in, in that um, we're going to have an emotional confidence coming back out of this thing. And it's going to be a different kind of confidence. And I think the kind of confidence we're going to have is one that's more respectful to, the, to a virus and to a pandemic like this. Hopefully, God willing, if it does come back, it won't be as strong. Uh, we'll be smarter, more informed. But also, I think that confidence is going to allow us to be more empathetic. Mm -hmm. And I think we're more empathetic than we just become better. So I do believe our bounce back not only economy, uh, getting back to jobs and employment, but also I believe we're going to be better for it. And I also believe it's going to be with that kind of, our bounce back is going to have that kind of, um, that kind of force and drive, that of a freight train. Now it might not happen overnight, but it's going to be one of those slow builds. You know, we talked about not running in, uh, you know, um, uh, that, that, that sprint, but it's going to be a marathon. But I, but I do firmly believe that, you know, and I also believe this governor, and I know you feel the same way as one day we will uh, rise again. No, I, I love that, man. I, I love the whole notion of, of empathy, seeing the world from a different set of eyes, uh, just softening our edges, our tone, our tenor, the way we talked about others, and people right. we didn't know, strangers, the way we re react to each other on social media, and just, you know, taking a pause back and really starting to talk about uh, this, this fundamental universal notion that there's no leak on your side of our boat, that we rise and fall love together. And I, so. I appreciate that, Dwayne, and, and I appreciate you, everything you're doing, your courage, your conviction, and man, I appreciate the frame around discipline as well, and hard work, grit, uh, and resiliency, and so I think this, uh, so many people are meeting this moment, uh, and I'm really grateful you and I had this moment together as well. Well, I appreciate you, Governor, and I know I speak for fellow Californians, and you know, uh, America too as well, and that I appreciate your leadership. It takes a special, as you know, and as a lot of leaders out there know, and a lot, a lot of people out there know that it's in time of trial like this and challenge that the, not the real leaders step up, I think, but the quality leaders step up. And you do it with a little bit of elegance. You do it with a little bit of grace. You also do it with some really great accountability uh, on both coasts. I thought both coasts stood up really strongly in the face of this from California to New York. And I appreciate that. I appreciate your leadership. I have one question for you that I know the world's going to want to know. Uh, I love my cheat meals on the weekends. I got a big one coming up. Uh, talk to me about your cheat meals. What kind of cheat meals are you rocking? What's your favorite? Brother, I, I, you, I can't. Sushi is not a cheat meal, so I'm over it. All right? That, that, that'd be like the, the healthiest thing I would do for my body. Uh, is eat, uh, eat but you know what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit, this is, uh, it's not now even a cheat meal. Because all the drive throughs started getting closed down, and I still needed my coffee in the morning. I found myself, forgive me, uh, but I'm, I'm in the majority here, I think, uh, with those Egg McMuffins. <laughs> so that's been my cheat meal recently. Uh, I'm not sure I can sustain me, but it's been my cheat meal. Hey, that's all right, brother. That's all right. <laughs> you go Egg McMuffins, I go tequila, and I'll go pancakes and French toast. I'll do the whole thing. But I like it. I, I like it, too. I we'll like the tequila. We will, uh, we will keep in touch. And again, thank you for your leadership and, and, uh, and your time. I appreciate it, Governor. Appreciate you. Thanks so much, Mike. Take care of yourself, buddy. All right, brother. You too. Talk yeah. soon.